returning to the hive, no worker gains easy admittance. It must first pass the scrutiny of a guard bee, a specialized worker who is constantly on the alert for unwanted visitors. Once inside, nectar is given to another worker. Later, it will be transformed to honey and stored. About once a year, the population of a hive begins to exceed its limits. The workers make preparations to produce a new queen. Meanwhile, at least half the colony gathers around the reigning queen. It is a phenomenon known as swarming. Suddenly, the swarm leaves the hive. They fly away and find a new place to live. The bees common in the United States are derived from the Italian honeybee, which was deliberately introduced here. In Africa, there are also honeybees. In most ways, they are like the bees in North America. Yet in some respects, they are very different. Thousands of years of evolution in a harsh environment has made them a nervous, nomadic race. They breed much faster and swarm more often than other bees. They also work longer, carry more nectar, and produce more honey. Their unpredictable habitat, where sudden brush fires are common and predators in search of sweet honey are numerous, has given these bees a temperamental disposition. They live on constant alert. A sudden movement, a dark color, even the smell of carbon dioxide from the breath of a predator can send them into a stinging frenzy. Their alarm odors will draw every nearby colony to join the attack in a common defense of the hives. In 1956, at the University of San Paulo, this man, Dr. Warwick Kerr, imported 26 hives of pure African bees to Brazil. His purpose was to try to breed the perfect honeybee, a kind of super bee which combined the hard-working, high honey-producing aspects of the African bee with the docile characteristics of the European bee. The African bees were prevented from escaping by queen excluders, metal grills that allow workers to pass through, but keep the larger queen inside the hive. Bee experts from around the world frequently come to the University of San Paulo. In 1957, a visiting beekeeper mistakenly removed the queen excluders from all of the African hives. The accident occurred at a time when the hives were ready to swarm. Nothing to stop them. The African queens and their colonies easily escaped into the wild. African bees swarmed into the countryside. They quickly established wild colonies and continued to breed. Though no one suspected it at the time, the accidental escape of the African bees was the prelude to disaster. African bees had been released into an ideal environment. Highly aggressive, they met little competition. Often they marauded native hives, killing the bees, robbing honey, and taking over their homes. They multiplied at an astonishing rate and established colonies nearly everywhere. In trees, under tile roofs, in the ground, in abandoned cars. Once gentle hives suddenly turned dangerous. The sensitive, easily disturbed killer bees were taking over. Cows and other farm animals were attacked. Thousands had been killed. Vibrations from tractors and other equipment caused savage attacks on many farmers. 
At the church of Santa Barbara in Niteroy, a wild swarm swooped inside during mass, stinging the congregation. In 1973, firemen used flamethrowers to destroy a wild swarm which had attacked over 300 people at a funeral service. A handful of dirt thrown at them triggered the attack. On several occasions, the commotion of a soccer game has caused bees to launch mass stinging attacks on players and spectators. In 1974, in Recife, Brazil, Jose Ferrero was hospitalized after being horribly stung by a swarm of killer bees. Several days later, he died. In Rio, a wild swarm entered a movie theater, badly stinging the audience. In Curitiba, an autopsy found 80 bees in this farmer's stomach. Three fishermen barely survived another attack. Since 1957, thousands of people have been attacked and badly stung by killer bees. At least 300 people have died.